Empress Bond, and today I am painting with a group of plein air painters out at Dry Falls in eastern Washington. I am here at Perch Lake, and I'm capturing some landscape art with some of my friends. So let's take an adventure with this group of plein air painters here in Washington. Standard palette colors are cad lemon yellow, cad yellow, cad yellow medium, lizard and crimson, ultramarine, cobalt, viridian green. That's some sort of blue green. <laughs> and my friends and I call that weirdo green, which is a lemon yellow um, green, uh, cad green. And then I've got uh, for my my modifying colors of just using uh, burnt umber, um, yellow ochre, and transparent red oxide is one of my favorites mm -hmm. for doing the underpainting. If, uh, so the transparent red oxide is a great way to kind of block stuff in. And then I'll uh, try to paint the background and start blocking in big colors and then come back and break up the big colors into the smaller Kind of like pieces. putting a puzzle together. It's a puzzle. It's, it's paint a puzzle. by it's paint by numbers, my style. Your style. <laughs> Sir you Jerry go. Wilson, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Sure. Jan's capturing the morning light. It's a little cloudy out here, so they're not quite as bright as usual, but... Quite cool. But that's all right. I'm getting the structure in. Yeah, what we call it? The bones? She's got the structure coming in and, and identifying the different shades of the basalt, the darks of the crevasses, the lights where the light is touching. Rod Wiegand, when I told him, he asked me if I painted on site. I said, yeah, I think on site. I drive up to a great view, I stop, I pull out my stuff, and I set up and paint. He says, what? That's roadkill. Oh! <laughs> and I'd never heard that term before. But that is so accurate. <laughs> I'll show you how to hike in the mountains. And you did. He said, he said uh, meet me at the Stewart Lake Trailhead at 5.30 in the morning. He said, no, it's going to be dark. He said, yeah, you have to, it takes three hours to get there. You want to get there when the sun's coming up. So you have to start at 5.30. Very dedicated. And he is. <laughs> and when we, after three hours, we arrived at Stewart Lake, the sun was just coming up. And he said, Welcome to my office. This is where I come to work. I thought, Yeah, that's a cool office. No doubt. I think I'll take it. <laughs> I agree. It is a wonderful office. I only do yellow, red, and blue, and I mix every color. You mix your own. Yeah. You got a sweet little setup here. Lounge back in your old chair on the ground. Wait, waiting for the snakes to come out and join you. <laughs> it's awesome. Hi, I'm Brad Brisbane. I've been coming down here at Ron McGehee's invitation since 2011, nearly every year, plein air painting. And this is the one that I did this morning. Um, the basalt cliffs, there's two of these towers here. They almost like look like cathedrals on an Acropolis. And so I painted them individually at different times here, but this time I wanted to paint them both at once. Uh, so what I was concentrating on on this composition was the puzzle pieces. So there's only a few separate pieces here. You can see the sky, it interlocks with the basalt cliffs. Then we've got the tree and hill band, and then there's the reeds here of its own shape, and then toothed in right here is the brighter greens because I was painting by the marsh there at Delaney. So anyway, uh, it's a lot of fun coming down here, and I think that this will improve my studio work because I have to paint fast, so I am minimizing detail, and that's one of the challenges for me. So anyway, have fun. I like to start with all like extreme colors yeah like i look for a color that's not there but like okay where's all the brightest red red color most warm extreme colors are the most cold extreme colors so i just like exaggerate everything right off the bat and just block out my composition yeah Sarah Hasslinger, out here at Perch Lake. <laughs> Off to a great start. 
And here's Ron McGahee out here with his big stick. Ron, why do you use that big stick? I was afraid you're going to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I use it to try to find the, it helps me find the big shapes. You know, like you can't frost the cake before you bake the cake. You oh. gotta have the big shapes before you get in there like that. Yeah. And so Keeping hopefully, it loose. hopefully I never get in there like that because it always kind of gets brittle. Mm -hmm. So that's why. There it is. And he's got this great setup. He's got his plein air kit. Scoping out the composition. Great. You just pick these big shapes, so you gotta get these shapes. This is a big shape, and you try to get the value down, and then you can come back and you can you can add some of these little spots here to look for the colors out there and try to represent that in a simple way. And over here, I'm judging this against that trying to get this is a little too dark this zone but this is fine we're, we're making these things you know constantly judging looking back and forth to see does it look right is it off which value it, is what's similar, the value and this is a little too dark this value but I like the color it separates it still and so now I'll start working this zone here and you can come in here and you can look for one of these bright trees here so this we know this we know this bright tree is here somewhere so we can now that we have some of these big shapes, we can come back and put the furniture in. Sounds awesome. There Thanks. it is. This is what we call Jan's Rock. I guess I established that it's my rock because I've painted it every time. That's a good one though, right? And then it's, a, it's a great promontory piece. Mm -hmm. I love how you have, you called it the apron on the sides yes, of the, it of looks the rock. Yes, like an apron and so where it's all green this year. It's quite green this year. Every year that has clumps of grass there that hold that space. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And you've got a little sky today. The blue is starting to come I through. Might, you might. might be able to get it in there. Look at seeing, one time I counted seven of those. They're either eagles or hawks, but they look like uh, golden eagles. They're brown. It's pretty great when you can sit long enough and enjoy nature and see what it shows you. Yeah, yeah, and then I think they were all raised in a nest here somewhere. Let me load this brush up for you. Okay, let's get this. Uh... Yeah, you can. Let's just try this to start with. Okay, take this brush like this. I'm going to lower this so you can get to it a little better. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. I'm only six, but people think three seven. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little taller than you. I'll make this shorter so you can. I want you to have a feeling, a feel of this. Okay, so, so look out there, and you see that? See, this is the, this is the weeds right here. Take a green stroke right along there for me, right, right, right here, right through here. See this line right here? Lay it down flatter and really push it down. Push it, there you go. Nice stroke. Keep going. Keep going. Now turn the brush a little. Now turn the brush a little like this. Okay, so if you stop there, that's good. Then take some of this gold color. So what you do is you take your hand and you roll around and go like this. Okay, put that gold color up above that. See, see in this zone here. There you go, fill that in. There you go, see that? Take some of this, take some of this white. Let me do this for you a second. Put that, put that in right where that blue is, above that gold stripe, right there. There you go. Blend it into that other one. There you go. There you go. You're painting. That's a reflection. <laughs> you just painted a reflection. Okay. Now we're gonna paint. Now you're gonna paint the darker reflection into the tree over here. So see this tree right here? When you look out there, do you see in the water where it's darker in the front right, right here? See this is dark right here? So take what colors do you, or do you know how to make green? What colors make green? Yellow and blue. There you go. So we're going to take some blue. And we're going to take some of this lemon yellow and we're going to make green. There's too much blue in there, so we need to add more yellow. Okay. When I am green, I do What do you think? That looks like a good green. So, okay, that's the green you're going to use to put 
So look over there at those trees and try to describe the, the shadows there underneath the trees on the water. There you go. Look right in there. A little, come over to your right a little more. Start, start right at the end of your gold stripe there because this is where the reflection is, right in this zone here. You can go vertical if you want like that. Okay, now come this way and turn the brush. Turn the brush like this. And make a nice big fat stroke across there like that. There you go. Okay, grab some more paint off the off the palette there. There you go. Swizzle it no around the circles. There you go. Now turn it a little bit, turn it a little bit so you can dig this. You want to get that paint built up on there. There you go. Now you can load it up on the okay. There you go, go for it. Nice big fat stroke through there. Go underneath the whole tree there, all the way to the edge. There you go. Swoosh shadow. You nice. put my shadow. Look in at that you. shadow. Beautiful. You like it? So what a great weekend painting plein air outdoors with friends. And so here's a few of my paintings from this weekend. Uh, some morning sits, some afternoon sits, and it's just really a great time to get out and see nature and spend some time with friends who really appreciate art. I encourage you to grab some paint, whether it's watercolor, acrylic, oils, pastels, whatever it is, a pencil and paper. Head out, look at the colors, look at the shading and see what nature has to say to you. Enjoy and keep on creating.